Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Most welcome to the session organized by the Scaling Up Nutrition uh, Movement, um, because we want in this session to have many um, actors um, to take the floor on the how to get the food systems dialogues at a country, the multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholder country dialogues, how to make them uh, fruitful, but also how to translate them into action. And we hope to have uh, a couple of people from the country level, we're quite sure about it, who are experienced and who are not afraid to speak up and speak out about the do's, but also what you should avoid, the traps, so to say. We can see that the number of uh, participants is still building up. Um, in the uh, right down corner of your screen, there is interpretation. There is a button, uh, an icon that you can push for French and Spanish and English interpretation so that you can listen and speak in uh, French, Spanish or English. So please choose the language that you would like to see. My name is Gerda Verberg. I'm the coordinator of the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, a movement that started 10 uh, years ago um, uh, uh, on the premises of uh, the need to, uh, bring, to bring different sectors together at the country level and uh, also different stakeholders to work together to uh, prevent and fight all forms of malnutrition. Right now, we have 64 member countries and four networks that are working together. Um, we have a civil society network with over 4,000 uh, civil society organizations. We have a private sector network with over 900 uh, members. We have a donor network and we have a UN network that is globally working, bringing five UN uh, organizations together. But at country level, sometimes we see more than 13 uh, uh, country level civil um, UN organizations. Um, but in these food systems uh, dialogues, our countries are very uh, active and very committed. And for that reason, we're going to have a conversation with uh, three people coming from Cambodia, Mr. Ian Russell, and he's the FAO uh, first senior policy office in, officer in Cambodia, Mr. Hu Kroon, and he's uh, the uh, uh, coordinator of the Sun Civil Society Alliance in Cambodia, and Mr. Sok Chi uh, Hak, and he is from the Sun Business Network in Cambodia. Besides this, uh, and hello, good uh, afternoon, good evening, good to see you. We have um, uh, Miss Anna Yanira Calderon, and she's executive uh, uh, director of the uh, of Kona Sun in El Salvador, and she is here with me in the room, and she is still uh, uh, struggling a little bit to get everything everything set. But I trust that he, she will be able to do so. And we have Dr. Shams, and um, he is. Um, the coordinator uh, uh, for the coordination unit of, for the Afghanistan food security and nutrition agenda, and he's the CERN technical focal point. Then we will have uh, two people uh, reflecting, uh, Ms. Carla Montesi. She's the director of the Green Deal and Digital Agenda in the European Commission, and she will elaborate on the how to nudge people to take uh, action um, and make progress, and Ms. Ima Culada Del Pino Alvarez, uh, the food security program lead at the International Development Law Organization and member of the government uh, action area. Um, and she will focus on the governance and, of course, on the human rights. Then we want to have an uh, interaction. Ensuite, nous aurons une conversation interactive avec vous. Are already doing. Um, uh, but we will, will make use of you. And then we will uh, have the closing of the session by Mike Kunga, and he is one of our uh, uh, many and growing number of youth champions for nutrition. This is the program. This is what we're going to run. And I'm extremely happy to first give the floor to Mr. Ian Russell. And I want uh, him to focus on the how um, to uh, make effective food, food systems dialogues in Cambodia. How do you do this? Over to you, Mr. Russell. 
Um, thank you, Gerda, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in Cambodia, I think we were lucky to have a, a, a very strong sun movement operating, and that really gave us a running start on the dialogues because uh, we'd been working for a year and a half prior to the um, uh, to the to 2021 on introducing the concept of food systems in Cambodia. It was a new concept, and we started doing this because in our national strategy, in the priorities that we identified, food systems came up as a priority, but um, our Cambodian colleagues decided it was too early to introduce this concept. And I would have to say that um, through the work of the Sun Movement, and the colleagues that we have here, we were able to bring this new concept onto the table, particularly in working with youth. And that, that has really set us up for policy dialogue in relation to food systems and, and given us a, ver a very good and interesting set of dialogues in country and the ability to, to put this forward. You're muted right now. You've muted yourself or, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Mr. Russell, Mr. Russell, why was it too early um, according to the Cambodians? Um, this, this was in 2019 when we released our national strategy for food security and nutrition. And in fact, we don't have the words in Khmer language for food systems that are understood, readily understood by ordinary people. And indeed, a lot of technical people struggle with the concept. So our challenge was to make this understandable to them. In one year, we had the uh, Deputy Prime Minister first, and then the Prime Minister using the words in their recommendations to us. Yeah. So that they're now part of the language. And what was the difficulty? Where exactly was it? Was it the difference between food security, let's say the calories, and the uh, nutrition, the, the quality of the food, the nu nutrients? Um, th there was some difficulty in relation to that, like the differentiation between food security and food systems. Mm -hmm. And a main challenge was for uh, people outside of nutrition to recognize that they were part of the food system. And at the, that at the very least, they are consumers and therefore central to the food system but that all of these other processes in industry, trade, um, the food environment and so on, this is all what we needed to be talking about. And it, it took us some time to get that um, accepted. But we're now yeah. at, at a point where it's on the table and part of our dialogue. Yeah. Is there one specific moment that was the aha moment in this whole process that everybody uh, at a certain uh, uh, got it? Yeah, uh, that's that's challenging because I, I would have to say we're still working through that. It, it okay. is a big process <laughs> yeah. that, to get people to understand it. But yeah. from the moment when the Prime Minister used the word food systems in his recommendations to us at the, for the National Nutrition Day, people, if they didn't get it, they knew that they should start to learn what it was. Okay, thank you very much. I'll come back to you. Mr. Hu Kroon, um, you're the civil society organization. How did you uh, nudge and encourage everybody to come to the table and to become part of the bigger food systems uh, uh, dialogue? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Excellency. I think uh, civil society organizations in Cambodia have been uh, benefiting in so many ways from the food system dialogue process. We have learned to be inclusive and to listen, to respect each other. And we have learned to put our identity aside and be open-minded to other stakeholder opinion. We learned that making the dialogue effective require a core group of strong supporters with clear role and responsibility under the leadership of the government, uh, especially the convener to prepare, conduct and report on the dialogue. I think uh, adaptation of the global guideline and tool 
to the country uh, context is the key. And finally, I think we learned that it is powerful to come together to achieve anything we wish to accomplish, no matter how big it is. You know, as long as we have a common understanding and unity, we can achieve it. And you know, in terms of the challenge. Y en cuanto a los desafíos que usted me... Like, um, the registrations and online platform were an issue. And um, in the first few dialogue, but it get better and better as long as, you know, more and more dialogue were organized. Thank you very much. Um, I don't believe everything you say, because of course you have learned a lot, but I know from my visit to Cambodia that at that time there was no uh, private sector. A network for Sun. Right now, there is a private yeah. sector, but um, private sector was not very well trusted, nor by the civil society, nor by the government. How did you overcome this to come together at the table? Thank you very much. And I always challenge the private sector because we are working uh, to ensure that the private sector is accountable for the enforcement of the. Uh, um, you know, press mills of issued court. And um, because I've been engaged and discussed with uh, Mr. Um, he is the coordinator here, he will speak out, but, um, you know, I've been uh, asked a lot of questions and clarifications. And I came to know that, oh, I, I'm in private sector, uh, be part of this uh, Sun C. Uh, sound uh, movement, it should be transparent uh, and, you know, uh, wholeness, and they have the principle of engagement. So that's why I think, you know, like uh, the role after learning this, you know, I mean, uh, the role of the private sector, I mean, uh, play important role. And I think that uh, we are really uh, have a really good um, uh, uh, dialogue, you know, with uh, everyone, including the private sector. Okay, let's involve the private sector. Mr. Sokchi Hak, you are the coordinator of the Sun Business Network uh, in Cambodia. How did you come to the table? Well, uh, thank you, Gerda. This is a very good question. I think it, it's easy because uh, in Cambodia, um, all Sun networks work together under the leadership of Excellency Soxilo, the general, the Secretary General of the Council for Agriculture and Rural Development, who is also the country Sun Movement Coordinator. So we work together. So it is easy for me to just come straight to the table. I think the more difficult is to involve our member to contribute meaningfully to these dialogues. But to, to jump to the table, it's actually you know, easy because we are really in a small team that really supports CAD in organizing this food system summit dialogue. Yes. So, are you representing a uh, representative uh, group of private sector, or is it only a small group of private sector, um, not representing the whole food uh, involved private sector of Cambodia? We aim to represent the whole private sector. But mm -hmm. for now, because our network have just been officially, you know, launched this month on the 15th. So at the first stage, we focus first with uh, company who are in the food systems, but we are strongly looking into company that employs a large workforce, for example, the garment factory in Cambodia, which, you know, uh, employ close to a million young women and young mother. And so one of our priority now is trying to, for example, to implement this workforce nutrition with them. So, so yes, we, we aim to represent every uh, private sector. We've been communicating with them that everyone have a role to play. And then whether you are a food system within, uh, you are a private sector within the food system or not, we all have a role to play, at least as uh, my colleague Ian mentioned earlier, as a consumer, you're part of the food system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Um, when it comes to workforce nutrition, how many companies, how many um, employees are now covered by workforce nutrition, including hopefully uh, um, decent uh, maternity leave and the opportunity to breastfeed? Oh, on that point, sorry, we, we have to start it. So okay. we just like, to, you know, touch the program. So we, we, we don't have all of those information, yet, but this is one of the things that we are really focused to do. Yep. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Um, I'll make how... sure to update, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, and I mean, we just, we just here because, um, um, the, the country, in-country um, uh, food systems dialogues are not there yet. This is the pre-summit to take stock of where we are, but to also do the cross-inspiration. What can we learn from others? What can others learn from, in this case, from Cambodia? Thank you very much. We come back to you um, and to all. So please keep your cameras uh, open so that we can, I can uh, call on you. Now we first go to Anna uh, Yanira Calderon. Uh, Calderon. She is the uh, Sun Movement focal point from El Salvador, working in um, Kona Sun. Um, uh, uh, Madam Calderon, you have already arranged uh, many food systems dialogues, uh, tell us uh, how many and tell us what are the concrete action results so far and what triggered different stakeholders to come together. Over to you. Muy bien, eh, gracias Gerda, un gusto saludarles a todos y, y qué bueno que... Este... Thank you Gerda, it's a pleasure to talk to you all and to share all the results. It was very interesting and very uh, promoting for us is to accelerate uh, the processes and the politics within the uh, food systems. The Ministry of uh, Health. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I was telling you at, at some point, the Ministry of Health started working and we, we had lots of hope uh, in terms of there were lots of institutions and somehow they didn't participate. They, they were trying to help with the population and also with the Ministry of Health because of nutrition problems that we had in El Salvador. So as to change some elements, on the other hand, there were institutions in the case of CONASAN, like the national uh, situation with sport and how we could promote uh, food systems. On the other hand, we, uh, I was telling you that in uh, El Salvador, we took part in five dialogues and all institutions, producers, uh, women's groups, uh, the indigenous groups. And also there was something important in these consultations. Historically, we hadn't uh, consulted um, 
people with uh, different capacities because there, there are also nutrition problems for those people. So we had to see how they work, uh, how they live in those areas. And uh, we were able okay. to Anna, establish I'm gonna strategies. Ask, I'm going to ask you a question because Anna, um, please put your micro on mute because we are in the same room and it's a little bit complicated. Um, Anna, how did you bring the different departments together? Because um, in not, not in all countries, the Minister of Health is uh, the convening, plays the convening role, but it's great. That's why we have asked you. But how did you bring on board all the other departments? Over to you. Well, that was an important experience for us. I think once this uh, program was submitted, the government of El Salvador had a, a sort of special dynamics to implement it. And uh, there was leadership under uh, the health ministry and CONASAN, and we raised our voices. We called on everyone to work on the territory. There was also a political dialogue where all minist ministers participated. We also have the support of the first lady with the very first uh, program for the uh, young children. So really that uh, sort of organized us and we, uh, they were all sensitized in terms of working together. El Salvador has a 14% in chronic malnutrition, but uh, there's also uh, the epidemic, which is affecting the whole world. Now, uh, when the, they okay. see that uh, okay. uh, our cost is 10% uh, malnutrition cost. I can have a conversation with you for, the, for one whole day with each of you. I'm quite sure. However, we need to try to bring things together. I have one more question for you um, because you're talking about the involvement of the first lady. Um, and that is great. But will your president be ready to make a strong commitment on uh, for El Salvador during the pre-summit where the heads of state will be requested to be the leader and make clear commitments? Hi, Gerda. Yes, definitely. That's uh, uh, the policy that we have. The plan of uh, social ministry is uh, to work on this uh, food uh, program. Excellent. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to it and it is very promising. Let me now go to Dr. Shams. Uh, Dr. Shams, um, I have already uh, uh, pointed at, the, at the, the complicated situation. You're one of the, of the countries in the Sun Movement um, who are in, in so-called uh, fragile uh, situation. How do you arrange to bring the different players together in order to improve the food systems, uh, the food systems for um, all involved, for people, for the planet, but also for uh, decent jobs, uh, income, and prosperity. Over to you, Dr. Shams. How did you do it? Uh, thank you, Gerda, and good afternoon to everyone. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, fragile context countries like Afghanistan, which are suffering, for example, from 40 years of conflict and war, multi-sectoral approach and bringing people together when 
the multi-sectoral approach as a board, as a buzzword itself, is a difficult task to do. But it is also an opportunity to use diverse and different ways and methods to bring people around one table that they discuss. So practical examples from Afghanistan uh, are that we actually go to the high political level for the support. When we started the food system summit dialogues, this currently, and even before under the Afghanistan food security and nutrition agenda, we always relied on the political well and the political support. So that is already available. That is one thing that we always run to them. The second thing is that we have a very, we already as established networks, platforms, and at the subnational and national level for the food security and nutrition agenda. So when we were called that we should technically lead the food system summit dialogues, it was not, it was a challenge, but not a scary challenge to us because we already had the established networks, luckily because of the sun movement, we already had the platforms and also knowledge how to do these consultations. The third point was that we have a very good partnership with the UN colleagues here in Afghanistan. So the UN Residence Coordination Office, our UN colleagues like from UNICEF, WFP, FAO, and also WHO, they actually provided a very good and timely support to us. But you know that in Afghanistan, especially in these days, not only with the COVID, but you know that the political and the military situation has worsened, we applied different methods. First, we went to those provinces that we, were, we could do. We were able to travel. Of course, we had a big plan, but our movements were restricted because of the security situation in those provinces. But we went to some of these provinces. The second thing that we also uh, did, that was the virtual meetings, with diverse stakeholders and people in those provinces. We had also in-person discussions at the Kabul level and also group level discussions at the Kabul level. And to be honest, in provinces that we went and in Kabul, we also knocked the door of restaurants, some shopkeepers, some traders, and talked to them about how they really see the food systems in Afghanistan and what will be the game changing actions in coming 10 years. So from one hand that we are obliged and we, we, we are deprived for the opportunities, but at the same time that challenges actually create for us to do more and to probe diverse actions and interventions to bring people around one table. And I, I, I must say that the scaling up nutrition, the sun movement coordination that we have, but at the same time, the structure we are established coordination platforms that we have established under the Afghanistan Food Security and Nutrition Agenda. That Thank was you very plan. much. Very, very good to hear that it's helpful to build on what is already there. I would like, before I go to uh, Ms. Uh, Imaculada uh, uh, Alvarez and uh, Madam Montesi, I would like to have to uh, ask one question that is in the question uh, uh, and answers box. Mr. Russell, can you answer the question how to avoid or deal with um, conflict of interest, especially in the um, uh, when it comes to um, to the different uh, stakeholders, how to avoid with it, uh, how to avoid it, or, or how to deal with it. Mr. Roussel, please come in. Thank you, Gerda. And I, I think the the main way uh, to deal with this is not to avoid the conflict of interest but to, in fact, to e expose that conflict of interest. And uh, the, the more that we can talk about the issues and see the points of view of different uh, stakeholders within the food system, the better we will be equipped to uh, make decisions about which directions we should take and decisions um, that are necessary. So uh, yeah, getting it on the table and talking frankly and making sure that all the voices are heard. Can I can I ask for for one example? I I'm very often here that uh, people say, but the private sector has such strong lobbyists lobbying uh, people in government and lobbying the parliament, etc. They will never give up, and their only interest is to make as much as possible profit. How would you deal with it in the situation in Cambodia? Uh, we have a, uh, quite a challenge there because things like the uh, consumer protection law and um, the institutional environment to support that is quite new, but they are moving into place. So we, we do need the laws and regulations, and above all, we need to ensure that, that there is enforcement. 
So, you know, we, we start in an area uh, like we've been talking about with breast, breast milk substitutes, as an example, and work from there and show by that work that government and other partner stakeholders are committed to the uh, enforcement of the law and then work with the private sector to show that the, the testing is fair and that if penalties are imposed, there's a reason for it. But that, that's, that's in the case of penalties. Yeah. There's a lot to be done for the awareness raising, uh, like working with our new business network and getting people on board with the ideas. Yeah. I'm not saying penalties. Thank you very much. Um, I leave it here because we need to move to the, to the answers, but your uh, recommendation is don't um, avoid taboos. There are no taboos. Put them on the table and try to take them forward. Deal with them. Uh, and discuss them and then sort out whether you can find solutions. I come to uh, Madam Alvarez uh, from ITLAW. Um, can you, uh, listening to the conversation here, can you give us con some concrete advice and recommendations on the governance of uh, the food systems dialogues, but also on the governance of the transition towards a food system that serves people, planet, um, and also creates prosperity? Madam Alvarez, please come in. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Gerda. It's a pleasure to be here today as the International Development Law Organization. Just a brief introduction to us, because we are the only global intergovernmental organization exclusively devoted to promote the rule of law to advance sustainable development. And we are highly committed to contribute to the sustainable transformation of food system embraced by the principles of the rule of law. So straightening legal frameworks, effective institutions and, and legally empowered people. So these are the three main areas of work and we have been collaborating with the governance action area of the Food System Summit uh, to create a policy briefing on, on food systems governance and what we intend on this food systems governance. So there are some principles or dimensions, we call it, uh, to straighten this food systems governance and this includes there are any others, but this includes mainly, you know, defining some common goals and targets, which are holistic and specific, context specific, foster interministerial coordination, strengthening territorial governance at all the level of the territories, of course, and pursue reforms across food systems policies and strengthening the rule of law supporting, supporting this food systems governance to enhance inclusive and equitable multi-stakeholder processes. So food system transformations requires a systemic and holistic approach for governments and other policy makers to design and implement fair equitable and non-discriminatory policy and legislative frameworks, build effective and transparent institutions. Yeah. Sorry. This is, no, this, is, this, is very, this is very clear to each and everyone. My question to you is, given your background, is how do we do this? For instance, in the, in the question and answer box, this is, um, um, there, there is a, a question how to make sure that everyone is at the table. For instance, that we don't forget the indigenous people, that we don't, don't forget the fisher folks. What would, you, what would be your recommendation? How would you suggest solutions? Thank you, thank you very much. These multi-stakeholder platforms indeed can be created or maybe institutionalized at country level, you know, at the different levels of the territories by creating these committees, formalizing already existing committees or councils, national councils that bring all the peoples across food systems. So including farmers, including the business, the academia, to discuss together, but not only to um, develop policies and, and, and the legal frameworks in a participatory way, but also to monitor and, and to uh, follow up the implementation to ensure that all the institutions and processes along food systems are really implemented in an effective and accountable manner. 
Thank you very much. Um, we go to um, Madame Montesi. She is, as I said already, the director of the Green Deal and the Digital Agenda in the European Commission. Please stay in the panel because we will have an, uh, also time for uh, more questions to come in. And uh, participants, um, you're all most welcome. Please put something in the Q&A if you want to ask uh, uh, a question because this is what we should do come forward with concrete questions and try to get concrete answers. Um, Madam Montesi, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Gerda, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It really, was really a pleasure to, to hear from the panelists. And allow me immediately say that, of course, this, uh, this summit, this press summit, uh, it's really a punctual this year to draw worldwide attention to the need for a long-term strategy for more sustainable and equitable food system. And allow me to say immediately that, of course, the European Union and its member states are clearly fully committed in working with countries from all the region of the world with the relevant stakeholders really to achieve an, an ambitious outcome of, of this summit. And Gerda, as you mentioned, an effective uh, follow-up actions. Now, on, on your question, uh, I think that that will be very, very important to ensure the political buy-in of all this uh, process. You, in Europe, you ask about Europe. In Europe, as you know, we have launched a new strategy, the European Green Deal, where clearly we put the sustainability and the well-being of people at the center of the economic, the social, the climate policies. In Inside the Green Deal, we have a concrete strategy, it's the farm to fork strategy that set how we can support the global transition to sustainable, inclusive food system, how Europe we want uh, really to redesign patterns of food production and the consumption. And allow me immediately say to you that, of course, we firmly believe that to succeed in, in implementing this uh, in global transition, we need a strong partnership. We need a collective action of different stakeholders from various sectors. And this is what we really we, we are doing, trying to implement to ensure the involvement of all stakeholders from the public and the private sector, the civil society organization, the knowledge institution, the policy maker. This Madam dialogue Montage. will be really very essential. Yeah. I will, I, I'll um, ask you one more question. Um, I know that farmers sometimes are a little bit reluctant because they know what they produce and they know what they get at the market. Uh, and they don't know, don't know if they change production, what they will. What is your most important uh, nudging instrument to attract, make it attractive for people to change their way of food production? Their involvement, the involvement of the farmers and the, inform, the involvement of the youth that we work in the future in the farmers will be essential. And what we need is to ensure that everyone come on the table at the same, in the same way, in the equal terms. So sometimes we need also to ensure to, to have an enabling policy environment. So we need to find the way to listen to the farmer's problem, to listen to work with the farmer organization in the way that we will be able to listen what are the key issues for them. Of course, yeah. one of the key elements that come on board that was raised, the, raised by the previous speaker, it's the support to the private investment also from the farmers. And for this, we will need, of course, new financial tools. But we can come later on this question. But Thank the key you. point will be the engagement of everyone. Yeah. Be involved and put also difficulties and uh, potential conflict on the table. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we come back. So please uh, stay connected. We go first to Mike Kunga. Mike, I know you're there. Um, please give your reflection. Is it helpful so far? Where do we? Uh, where can you step up further? Because um, you count on us, but we very much count on you. Uh, because you're the generation to take it forward and to um, leave this world a better place to each and every one. Mike, the floor is yours. Thanks so much. Uh, pleasure to be here. 
and uh, hi everyone wherever you are so perhaps listening from the discussion what i can say uh, from this is how is how to bring the, the diversity of knowledge from all key players and this can only be brought about when we engage everyone starting from farmers uh, youth indigenous people and the like but one key thing that i want to highlight is how are we going to promote the dialogues among these key players themselves not us being part of it for instance how are we going to promote the dialogues promoting dialogues among the women farmers how are we going to promote uh, dialogues among the indigenous people so when we bring this knowledge together it will be key for us to, to, to digest and improve our food systems so moving forward i'll be quite interested to uh engage more in this discussion see this um, this was just quite my mike mike but... mike i would like to challenge you what do you want uh people to do to involve uh, these people more into the discussion what would be your recommendation on how to do it the first recommendation which i can say right now is to reach uh these people wherever they are for instance if you're talking about youth in rural communities you need to reach the youth in and for instance, uh, talking of uh, women farmers, we don't have to do the dialogues just in general, uh, maybe at national level or maybe at regional level, but we need to reach them in their communities so that we bring their knowledge together. So that would be the very first recommendation which I can give from yeah. this discussion. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mike. And, and med, uh, all people in the panel, please raise your hand um, if you want to jump in. But I try to summarize a little bit some questions in the Q&A box. Um, there are different questions about how to make sure that you don't leave anyone behind from the dialogue table, that everyone who has a stake and want to bring in something um, will have a seat at the table can be invited i would like to go to mr who croon um how croon um how did you make sure your 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 um coordinating many civil society organizations in cambodia how do you make sure that this um community uh people's movement is not left out from uh, a food systems dialogues and that they feel involved and engaged Thank you very much. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, uh, it is important to have uh, all different stakeholders from national and sub-national level, and also from different sectors to join force in this uh, movement. And for us, um, well, the people at the national level are really actively engaged in this dialogue. We also uh, build uh, uh, connections with the sub a national stakeholder to also join the dialogue. And um, for this, we've been uh, engaging in supporting um, to have the sub-national, uh, provincial and district um, to join the, 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 the dialogue in several occasions in which, you know, one, I mean, a few provinces where we have the minority groups uh, actually also uh, have the representative to join with us to express the opinion and the um, idea about the sustainable food system visions for the Cambodia and how we can reach to that visions. So with this, uh, I think uh, we been uh, able to ensure that those people, um, marginalized group at the sub-national level, both in the stakeholder, uh, you know, like the decision maker, but also they are representing the voice from the people in the community to express this view, you know, for, for this bigger picture for the national roadmap. Thank you. Um, I am um, a leader of a regional women's platform of food producers. And I'm not invited to the, um, and I make a phone call to you and to Mr. Russell. And I said, I would like to represent these women because they need to be at the table. What will be the answer I get? You are welcome. We will have to uh, get you for full participations in the food uh, system dialogue. Wherever you are, we will uh, have to connect you. So that okay. is my answer. 
Mr. Russell, is this happening as we speak in uh, Cambodia, that, that people are, more and more people are coming to the table because they think they need to be there? Uh, there's certainly an increase in the uh, interest, and, but we, we struggle to be able to break the floor from our dialogues when we're working online. By that, I mean reaching down to the farmers, the fisher folk and so on and reaching out to the remoter parts of the country. So our entire dialogue process has taken place with COVID restrictions, limiting travel, and has been mostly conducted online. So I'd very much say that um, the question you posed is something that we'll deal with even after the summit. This is not, the summit will not be the end. We've got a lot of work to do, and these, the kind of uh, political ceiling the floor to the community. These, these are issues that we'll need to deal with. Uh, so the country dialogues. So the country dialogues are there to stay and continue. Indeed, with it, and we have continuer, n'est-ce pas? Après le sommet, oui, absolument. Nous avons des plateformes existantes pour continuer et pour modifier ces dialogues. Anna Calderon, comment est-ce que uh, vous pouvez? Uh, réagir à ces femmes leaders qui veulent avoir une place à la table. Sí, gracias. Eh, yo creo que una de las cosas importantes es reconocer que, que está este sector, ¿verdad? Que está este sector importante, no solo para la agricultura, sino que todo el enfoque de los sistemas alimentarios eh, se dio el ejercicio, eh, no solo por el gobierno de El Salvador, sino que Naciones Unidas también ha identificado muchos grupos, eh, se sentaron y ahora en la construcción de algunas políticas y programas se está tratando de retomar eh, esas sugerencias y esas valoraciones que está generando este grupo eh, poblacional importante. Entonces, también son bienvenidas, ¿verdad? Eh, 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 para todo el, el, el tema del desarrollo, eh, en todas las aristas, desde la nutrición, desde el, el, el primer eslabón de producción hasta el consumo, la mujer juega un papel importante. Y creo que ahora, si no tomamos en cuenta realmente el rol que tienen, los sistemas alimentarios no van a funcionar. Entonces, sí, todos son, todas son bienvenidas y, y realmente se está tratando de retomar como parte de las prioridades y de las políticas que se están generando en el gobierno. Son, todos son bienvenidos. Sí. Thank you. Thank you uh, Madam Alvarez, um, how um, do we get it in the leadership's portfolio of the um, presidents, of the leaders of a government, the presidents and the prime minister? Yeah, they should take this uh, leading role, of course, you know, across these multi-stakeholder platforms. And, and this should be enhanced by, to me, you know, it's like the enabling environment. So food system transformation really beyond the food systems dialogue and beyond the summit itself should think about how to uh, create the enabling environment, which will allow this holistic approach, this systemic approach, you know, beyond the summit. So this holistic approach should be enabled by legal frameworks creating new institution, maybe food systems institution fully dedicated, which are multi-actor with enhanced participation and non-marginalization and promoting all the principles of human rights-based approach. And these committees or councils or, or national institutions at all the territorial level, of course, should be led by the office of the prime minister to ensure a, a, a commitment of, from the state point of view. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all. It's uh, um, uh, two, uh, 19 right now, 2.20, we will finalize. Let me make some summary remarks. Uh, first of all, thank you all for committing and for being here to also answer questions. Um, it needs to be country-led, country-driven. No country is the same.
Um, the food systems dialogues are here to stay and the composition of the people around the table will be different from uh, the question and will be dynamic uh, also on the topics that are raised, but no, no one should be excluded. Build on what is there, make use of the networks and the institutions that are already uh, in the country uh, level, don't start from scratch. There are no taboos. If there uh, is our sensitivities, bring them to the table. Uh, private sector, or lobbyists or uh, politicians who only do uh, lip service, bring it to the table. An open and dynamic uh, um, uh, uh, way of working. If you're missing the private sector, invite them to the table because they are part, need to be part of the solution. Workforce nutrition is a commitment that is a no regret. It's winning, um, it's win-win for employers and employees. And it's very good if uh, maternity leave and decent breastfeeding would be uh, involved. And even then it is a win for the uh, lawyers, be, for, the, for the employers, because um, gosh, it is binding if women don't lose their uh, job. And it's also a matter of equality and justice. Um, leadership is crucial, leadership at the, in the, at the government uh, level, young people, gender is a crucial uh, uh, issue, they need to be at the table and others, otherwise use your own linking um, uh, capacities to bring them to the table, an enabling and encouraging envir environment, um, uh, try to understand each other's language and uh, scientific, scientific people, please um, learn to use language that can be understood by everyone. How to fund things is um, uh, important. Government should in invest themselves from the domestic budget because that is emphasizing the ownership. And for the rest, I think international funding should be brought uh, together in order to support and align behind the country priorities. And science should be available, uh, uh, demand uh, driven, um, and in a very supportive uh, uh, way. Um, we have not been able to answer all the questions. We had only 50 uh, minutes, but I would like to um, ask all the participants, um, applaud, big hand for yourself, for your active commitment to all the panelists involved. Thank you so much. We count on you. Please move on because we are not there yet. We are only starting, but we are part of a transformation that is exciting because it's serving people and our planet alike. And finally, one uh, big hand for all the people who have been working so hard on the organization of this uh, event. And with this, and raising my own hands uh, for a big hand to everyone, I would say thank you so much. The meeting is closed. <laughs>